Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks and feet and preparation combined The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever disagree with that because as we can we can we see how world affairs world events are shaping up right and um, the West is not going to get any better and I believe that um, well Africa is an our, our ancestral home let's start with that and so and that has always been the objective and the goal one of the main goals of Rastafari is to you know repatriate to the motherland and so um, that has never that has not changed um, you know it's not in my mind and in the minds of a lot of other people. Although some people have no started, um, you know, giving different version everywhere yeah. in the world. It's Africa. You can have Africa in your heart or in your mind, so forth and so on. Well, I, um, well, I, I hear that, but I don't subscribe to that. I believe a physical reparation, um, sorry, repatriation is necessary, right? I mean, it has to be mental as well, obviously, but um, a physical return to the motherland is necessary. Um, the African governments need to do more to um, facilitate our to return and to understand our situation. And many times they do, it, it, you know, many times they do, but they are constrained by international forces, or forces outside of themselves, you know, ec the ec economic pressure that has been brought to bear on them, political pressures that have been brought to bear on these leaders that, um, you know, cautions them to not open up their arms to us too, too willingly because our oppressors, in the, oppressors in the West, they want to box us in. They want us to not have any way out. Yeah, true. And if we believe that we have a, a home, um, a, a mother who's waiting for us with open arms, right, then we will be less likely to tolerate their offenses, you know, the discrimination, the racism that we, that we uh, um, you know, the oppression that we experience in the West. And, um, you know, you know, to, in order to come home to uh, um, to our motherland, right? So there is that the international pressures, as I said, that is brought up to bear on the African leaders and heads of states, right, to not facilitate our return. One of the things, and Henry Kissinger, who was a former, um, he had a high-ranking position with the Secretary of State for a while under Nixon, I believe, back in the seventies. And he said that one of the aim of the, um, the American government was to not allow those in the West to ever link up with those on the continent because they know the potential, they know the power. You understand me? Because we're coming with a lot of knowledge, but there's also a lot of knowledge here too, right? So if we were to combine our, our, our resources. So do, do you think that, uh, sorry to cut you, but do you think that we in the diaspora, <laughs> even though we have created this movement Rastafari, but do you think that we need to be more active in, in returning home and um, not just going by the narrative that we, we, we are accustomed to, which is um, the European brought us in, in the West so they should take us back to, right. to Africa. And that is, um, yes, and I understand that that, that that argument has its merits, right? That they always say that also we never fear for home. So we're not going to go back home. But even Dada himself evolved on the issue. From what I understand, if I'm, you know, I, I have spoken to many brethren, including the Honorable Priest Campbell, who was one of Dada's, you know, right hand man for many years, right? Critical, yes, critical. He was very, very critical, you know, to the running and, and the, the organization of the Congress. He does not come out and toot his own horn, as a lot of other people have done. But quite frankly, he has the receipts. He can talk because he has the receipts. 
You understand me? And there are people who can confirm his story when, if he were to speak. You understand? And so he has told me that Dada said that he really didn't think that we would still be in the West. You know, at a particular time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he said, I said, by now I thought that things would have moved along, right, more. We think they would have gone home already. And recognizing that things are not moving in, in you know, at the speed at which he had anticipated, that I said to Chris Campbell, we will look what we passed for You understand? So he even he recognized, and that's, you know, that I was, you know, he was evolving on the issue, as we all must evolve. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't have this mindset that um, we have to stay put until... Um, well, uh, uh, most of us will have to stay put. Let's, let me put it that way. But there are some trailblazers. There are people who should go ahead, who can effect change, right? Pioneers. Pioneers. People who can effect change, right? Mm -hmm. Who can come and influence the governments in the various African um, countries? Who can come in with some economic power, right? Create jobs, make yourself show the people what what we're made of. Even as we're trying to educate them, even as we're trying to culture them, you understand? Let them see how useful we would be here. You understand? Let them know that our enslavement in the West, yes, it was it's a terrible thing. Horrible things have been done to us. But we have somehow managed, as black people, as strong and as resilient as we are, right, as courageous as we are, we have managed to make lemonades out of lemon. And so, here it is. Yes, they did this to us and with the intention of breaking us entirely. And that did not happen because some of us, some of us emerged triumphant, right? And here and we have returned now to Africa. And not only have we returned, but we can contribute to the economy. Right? We can contribute, we can create some jobs, we can um, build schools, we can build hospitals, we come with our knowledge, right? And so we're an asset. We're an asset to be pursued. And so that is what we want to show the government. We don't want to come here and fall on hard times and make ends meet. Because if I were running a country, I'm not looking to mean a whole host of poor people. You know what I mean? I, we have homegrown poor people, we have local poor people. I don't need to import poor people, right? So some people have to come in ahead and set the stage and work with the government to formulate policies that will facilitate the return of the masses. So when you say people, are you speaking specifically about Rastafari people or just black people in general? Right, well it's black people in general, right? Um, and but in general, black people, but Rastafari specifically, because that is our mandate. You understand me? We have a mandate. We have a different objective. So a lot of African Americans are, you know, are other people from Jamaica, wherever. Black people from the West come in, and they're like, yeah, because I'm tired of the West and you know all of the racism I experience and all of that. And so I want to come to a place that's peaceful. They don't really have an agenda to come and say, let me build Africa. Because we have to build Africa, you know. That is, yes, if your mother not all right, you can't all right. You have to build your home. And let me tell you something, it is so heartbreaking for me. When I see my husband and I and my daughter, we're going on Spintex Road to buy supplies for, you know, we're building a home. A house up in the, um, in the mountains. And everything we want, we have to go on Spintex Road and buy from Arabs and Chinese in a black country. In a black country, we have to take our money and give it back to it. Non black yeah. people. To the, to the slave master. To the slave master. Because we are not, we do not have. There are very few, you know, black people <laughs> the of the sort that we need. And that is why I'm saying, that's why we have a unique opportunity to justify because we have the consciousness. We're going to have the money. You understand? And we can get done without money. Money moves the needle. People receive you because we don't have time to be telling you we have a tribe culture and people. You see, while the grass, my mother in law always said this while the grass is growing, the horse is starving. You understand? So, we have not time to take, take 10, 20 years of culture, these people, and bring them around. They respond to money. Everybody responds to money. So, yeah, yeah. So, show them what you can do. Show them why 
you being here is so critical to their own um, growth and development. Why you are an asset? Yes, why you're an asset. And why you should be facilitating my return.